Are you ready to level up your understanding of this blockchain technology space? P.S. I think that you are. So don't go anywhere. Today, I will be talking all about smart contracts. So don't go anywhere. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode. Today, I will be going through kind of a low level understanding and explanation of smart contracts, moving right along to what kind of disruption they offer. And of course, the use cases, the specific ways that smart contracts can be used, following up with some platforms that are actively using smart contracts and how you can interact. So getting right into it, the world was introduced to this concept of smart contracts way back Back in 1996 by a man named Nick Zabo, who is an intellect to say the least. His name also might ring a bell from those who might think he's Satoshi. Uh, at the very least, he was definitely involved in the beginnings of Bitcoin. But anyway, so that idea was floating around ever since 1996. But the foundation that would ultimately allow for the function of smart contracts wouldn't come about until 13 years later. Yes, on January 3rd of 2009. And yes, I am talking about the first block of Bitcoin being mined and the blockchain technology with which it functions. Blockchain technology allows for peer-to-peer transactions to occur in an honest way without the need of a centralized third party to oversee and ultimately control and censor those transactions. Smart contracts add additional functionality to those peer-to-peer transactions. For example, blockchain technology allows for me to make a transaction from me to you, a simple transaction from point A to point B. Good old Alice and Bob. Smart contracts enable me to make a transaction from me to you with also the added ability to set certain conditions that must be met before that transaction is completed. Also, just like how blockchain technology has removed the need of a third-party middleman from simple transactions, smart contracts enables the ability to remove third parties from complicated transactions. And this translates to improved efficiencies for both time and money. Now, let's say you've done a little research on smart contracts and you've noticed they seem to be a little bit synonymous with Ethereum. Now you wouldn't be wrong. Although Ethereum is no longer the only blockchain network uh, with a programming language that allows for smart contracts, it was the first network that allowed for the function of smart contracts. Now, here's a brief explanation why. I found it in a Medium post by CoinMonks, of course. The link to this full article can be found down below in the video description, but here is a small snippet. Uh, This idea, meaning the ability to use smart contracts on the Bitcoin network, uh, was initially presented by programmer and publisher of Bitcoin magazine, Vitalik Buterin. This idea got rejected in the Bitcoin community. The main reason being that script language, which is the programming language for Bitcoin, uh, was specifically designed to lack those features for security reasons those features being the features that would allow for the functionality of smart contracts. The Bitcoin language is Turing incomplete by design, meaning that developers don't have all of the complex operators and structures that exist in most other programming languages. Being Turing incomplete ensures that there's less room for bugs in the code, making it more secure, but at the same time, less flexible. From that refusal, Vitalik Buterin wrote the white paper of Ethereum, a general purpose blockchain with Turing complete programming language called Solidity that allows developers to program a limitless amount of possible scenarios, which explains why we've seen so many different dApps on the Ethereum blockchain and other blockchains that allow for smart contracts, like for example, EOS and Tron. Even though smart contracts are great at removing third parties and a lot of human interaction and potential human error, 
don't you worry because smart contracts are, you know, a made up of code and code that was written by humans. And in that way, it is fallible. It is not infallible. So because of this, smart contracts are subject to having errors and ultimately not exactly functioning in a way that they were meant to. In fact, we have seen this plenty of times before. Most recently, we've seen quite a few hacks due to the loopholes found in smart contracts used in DeFi platforms. Uh, the smart contracts are kind of like an escrow service where a lot of people have stored their funds and hackers have found loopholes within this smart contract that would allow them to siphon off the funds. Also, for those of you who have been around this space for a few years at least, I do not need to remind you of the Ethereum DAO debacle, which ultimately resulted in a contentious hard fork that resulted in the creation of Ethereum Classic. But the attack vectors are being identified by hackers, yes, through hacks, but attack vectors are being identified and remedied. Bugs are being found by users and being, you know, fixed accordingly. And over time, these smart contracts will prove to be much more secure and robust robust, but let me give that reminder to you yet again, this is our treat of being a part of this space early. We get to see the efforts being put forth and the hurdles that these developers have to go through to uh, provide us with a really well working product. That being said, let me get back to the situations where smart contracts are most likely to be used. Now this list I'm going through will be available to you again down below in the video description. So right off the bat, we have digital identity. Smart contracts can allow individuals to own and control their digital identity containing data, reputation, and digital assets. They can also be used for things like records. Uh, smart contracts can digitize the uniform commercial code filing and automate their renewal and release processes. They can also automatically perfect a lender's security interest loan creation. Smart contracts can be used with mortgages. They can automate mortgage contracts by automatically connecting the parties, providing for a frictionless and less error prone process. The smart contract can automatically process payment and release liens from land records when the loan is paid. Also listed here are things like supply chains, auto insurance, clinical trials, cancer research, and a lot more. Now let's get into some of the platforms that are actively using smart contracts to help streamline and bring more efficiency to their process. You have uh, Fizzy AXA, which is a French airline, and they are taking flight insurance to the blockchain. The idea is simple. It can be challenging working with airlines to get compensated for late flights, even if you have travel insurance. And even then it can be a headache depending on why the flight was delayed. Let's all take a moment and imagine waiting on the phone, listening to the music, waiting to get a hold of an operator. Hopefully they speak your language as their native language, they can understand you. Let's not mention the fact, you know, that they might not agree with you that you deserve to be compensated for whatever situation you may be in. With a smart contract, this is all automated. Yes, the flight did not take off on time. It was uh, recorded to be a certain amount of minutes um, delayed, and that triggers the smart contract to release your reimbursement if you have registered with their travel insurance. It's all instant automatic and not a headache for you any longer. Now this next one, Ether Party, got me a little bit excited to think that there was something that existed like this, but unfortunately I couldn't find a lot of recent publishings by this company. Um, you know, the last time they really gave an update was back in 2017, but regardless, I will read a description of this. And if any of you know of a similar product or project that is uh, current with something like this, please, I encourage you to leave it in the comments down below because I would love to speak more about um, a relevant functioning project that gives this kind of tool to people um, in my uh, future videos talking about smart contracts. But so anyway, here's what Ether Party at least was about. If it is current, 
please, again, I'm happy if you correct me in the comments down below. So this is a Vancouver startup, and they call themselves the Smart Contract Creator. It allows users to build their own smart contracts. They launch their contract wizard with 500 pre-registered users who can, who can access pre-made templates in their beta product. Again, I believe this, this uh, company may have pivoted and they might be doing something else now, but if there is something like this that currently exists, leave it in the comments. Um, also, uh, one that I've talked about in the past is Populous. I'm not sure also if this one is current, but it is an interesting concept nonetheless. And Populous would allow for invoice financing as a way for business owners to get their money from unpaid invoices. Invoice buyers pay up front to take over the invoice for the business and then gets paid the original amount when the debtor pays the invoice. So it's kind of like, you know, you can turn into your own little collection agency, but in the meantime, the business gets the liquidity and uh, capital that they need to continue their business. Um, there's a few more also, but just some simple examples of how smart contracts are helping to disrupt a lot of different industries and help businesses become more efficient for both time and money, something that I think everyone could benefit from. So that's my video on smart contracts. If you enjoyed this, I appreciate it if you leave a like and hit that subscribe button so you can get more videos like this when they come out. In the meantime, we will be coming to you live, Toby and I, on Monday, noon Eastern time. I'll be seeing you guys then. Have a good one.